Hello. How did you find Charlie? He just showed up one day. It was really odd. I remember Abby and I were in the basement talking about hiring someone to help us. 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang and there stood Charlie, looking for work. How do you know Lewis? He stopped by one day to introduce himself. He seemed awfully curious about our property, but he's an antique dealer specializing in the Victorian period. He's been extremely helpful advising us on authentic decor. Have you heard of someone named Lizzie Applegate? No, I haven't. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Take care. The spirits wish to speak to you, Nancy. Tonight, I will channel their energies to deliver a message. Meet me down in the basement, if you dare. Please sit down. We really don't have time for this. Let us begin. We are gathered here tonight to contact the shades of those who have passed before us. Gaze into the crystal ball. It will answer all of our questions. What's that? <gasps> who has called me forth from the great beyond? We have. Are you the spirit known as Valdez? I was once called that in the world of the living. Are you the spirit who has caused these accidents? I have come back searching for her, my wife. Where can she be? The spirits have spoken. The seance is over. We've got a busy day tomorrow, and no more time for these games, Abby. And make sure you blow out the candles on your way up. I don't want to wake up and find the house on fire. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's locked.
It's locked. It's locked. Is there more to this music than what I'm seeing? There's something hidden here. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. I hope you're convinced now that the spirits are with us. These ghosts are here to stay. I found out how you rigged the seance table with a projector. <laughs> that was a pretty good show you gave. Okay, so I staged part of the seance. But that still doesn't mean this place isn't haunted. Seances were very popular during the Victorian era, and I plan to entertain our guests with them. It'll be a great way to promote the place. What kind of person is Charlie? He seems to feel bad about all of these mishaps. Ugh, it's clear to me that Charlie's totally responsible for the accidents. Who else could it have been? He's a really nice kid, but he has no idea what he's doing. Unfortunately, Rose doesn't want to fire him. And there's something suspicious about him. I heard someone crying in the hallway. Was that you? I told you the spirits were interested in you. Was it a woman crying? I saw those papers in the parlor. Where did you find them? Right in my room. They're so vintage. I'm going to ask Louis if he can get me some antique frames for them. Rose and I can use the letters in our historical display. Historical display? Yes, they're very popular in bed and breakfast. They usually contain old photographs, letters, documents, things like that. Were there any photographs with the papers? I did find this old picture of a woman dressed in men's clothing. I think it was taken in the entryway by the staircase. I sent it to a photographer to have it restored. Was there anything else in the photograph that was odd? I don't remember anything else. Have you seen the poem in my room? Oh, I love that poem. Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. How does the rest go? It was there when we bought the place. Do you know much about Lewis? It must be great having your own expert on Victorians. He owns Chandler Interiors, a very reputable antique store. I'm sure his clients will be quite interested in our bed and breakfast once they hear about our resident ghost. How long have you known Rose? A couple of years. She has good business sense, but I think she needs to think more about advertising. Otherwise, we're just like all the other B&Bs in this town, and believe me, there's plenty of them. Did the house come with a lot of furniture? There were a lot of pieces and knickknacks left behind, like the books in the study, your bed. I think it was too large to take out of the room. You mentioned Charlie was suspicious. How so? The other day, I was down in the basement working for over an hour, and suddenly he sneaks up on me. 
I bet he was down there the whole time, watching me. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Bye. Hello. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. So long. Hey, Nancy, I see you survived Abby's seance. Man, that Veldez guy sure sounded creepy. Have you ever heard of him? Valdez, I mean. I've heard of a Diego Valdez. He was a wealthy rancher who lived in the 1800s. Yeah, I just read a book on him for my history class. Was he from San Francisco? No, he was sort of a hermit and never married. But he was extremely generous. He gave away thousands of dollars. Have you seen the poem in the Chinese room? Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. It almost sounds like there's a hidden message in there, you know? Can you tell me more about the accidents? I'd really rather not talk about that right now. How do you like working for Abby? She's not bad. She can be a little weird. I think she gets on Rose's nerves sometimes. What do you mean? She always does a disappearing act whenever Rose needs her to do some work. And I think Rose is sort of hatty, you know? Abby thinks the house is haunted. Do you? I'm not sure. Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out. But that's Abby's department, not mine. I'll let you get back to your renovation. So long. When the eye of the phoenix is in your hand, Drew Residence, Hannah Groon speaking. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Nancy. Abby is very strange. She really is convinced there's a ghost somewhere in the house. I don't know Abby very well, but I never felt comfortable with her. I can't put my finger on it, but she just seemed, oh, I don't know, like she wasn't who she really was, like she was putting on an act. Do you think Rose should be concerned about Abby? Oh, no, I didn't mean it in a bad sense. Abby has always been very helpful to Rose, and they've always gotten along very well. I met Rose's handyman, Charlie. He seems nice. Rose told me he's a fine young fellow, but a little rough around the edges. I believe she said he's studying history at a community college. History? Oh, that reminds me. Do you know who Rose bought the house from? I don't remember the name, but I do remember that a young man had inherited it from some distant relative and had to sell it very quickly to pay the inheritance tax. He accepted Rose's bid, even though it was very low. Did you know Rose has a resident expert on Victorians? Oh, yes. Rose has mentioned Lewis several times. She's really fond of him and is very grateful for his help. How has he been helpful? He's found some Victorian antiques at good prices, and he's making sure the renovations are done correctly.
Have you heard about the seance Abby hosted for Rose and me? Seance? Good heavens. Has Rose ever mentioned someone by the name of Valdez? No. She never mentioned the name. Abby faked the seance. She rigged a table with a projector. Well, you didn't think it was for real, did you? Don't worry, Rose, about this. She has enough on her mind already. I just can't imagine why Abby would go to all that trouble. I just found a hidden attic. I wonder if it has anything to do with all these accidents. Hmm, perhaps it does. Nancy, keep this a secret until you get to the bottom of these strange events. Don't even tell Rose. The less everyone knows, the more you can investigate without creating suspicion. I should get back to work. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew? I haven't heard from you in ages. How's Hannah in River Heights? You're not in San Francisco, are you, my dear? Actually, I am. I'm helping one of Hannah's friends, Rose Green, renovate this wonderful old Victorian mansion. She wants to open up a bed and breakfast. Hmm. Seems to be the trend these days. I'll bet you're staying in the Haight-Ashbury district. I'm not sure. The place is located on California Lane. 4653, I think is the number. You know, you're lucky you caught me at home. I've been traveling most of these days, but after that crazy tour of Egypt. By the way, riding a camel is not as easy as it looks. My editor gave me an assignment right here in town. It'll be on the Dragons of San Francisco. Dragons of San Francisco sounds exotic. What kind of dragons are you researching? Chinese dragons. My editor thought this would make a great topic for a photo essay. The dragon is a very important symbol in Chinese culture. So it seems. My room is full of Chinese decorations. Oh, sure. Many of the Victorians have rooms with themes, usually colors or cultures. I once spent a night in a Victorian where each room had a bird theme. Don't laugh, but I stayed in the nuthatch room. <laughs> You're kidding. Why do they call these mansions Victorians? They're named after Queen Victoria, who pretty much defined high society in the late 1800s. After the gold rush, San Francisco had a building boom, but most of the great Victorian mansions weren't built until the late 1800s. Nowadays, it's very popular to convert them into bed and breakfasts. Were many of these mansions destroyed by earthquakes? Oh, yes. Many of the early Victorians were destroyed in the fires after the Great Earthquake in 1906. It's often quite difficult to find out about a house's history before that time. Oh dear, am I talking too much? <laughs> I get so distracted at times I tend to get carried away a bit. So how are you, Nancy? Why did you call? Is there anything I can help you out with? What do you know about the Bandit's Treasure? Bandit's Treasure? Oh, you mean the play! The rep did a season where they performed old local plays, including the Bandit's Treasure. I've never seen it, but I hear the music is fantastic. I found some old papers in the house. Plus a page from a phone directory dated 1894. Oh, that sounds valuable. It's hard to find old documents like that before 1906. Can you tell me about the Chinese writing system? I seem to come across a lot of Chinese symbols. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. The Chinese have been an important part of San Francisco history for over a hundred years. The symbols are called Hanzi, and each one represents a particular thing, or an idea, or an action. You find them all over, on business cards, takeout cartons, artwork. Have you heard of an antique dealer named Louis Chandler? Nope, never heard of him. Have you heard of an actress, Lizzie Applegate? Oh, sure, she was a good friend of Lotta Crabtree, another popular actress in the late 1800s. As I recall, she opened up a big hotel. What was it called? The Hotel Mandrake or the Oriental? I forget. Have you ever come across hidden rooms in Victorian mansions? No, but I've read that many houses were only partially rebuilt after the Great Earthquake, closing off damaged rooms from the rest of the house. Do you know where Yerba Buena Town is? That's what San Francisco was called back during the Spanish colonial period, but no one calls it that anymore. 
Tell me about the Spanish and San Francisco. Oh, you could write a book on that. The Spanish were the first Europeans to settle this area during the 1700s, and it stayed that way until after the Mexican-American War when it was handed over to the United States. It couldn't have happened at a better time because gold was discovered outside the city not more than two years later. <laughs> With all of that gold around, I'd imagine there's a lot of buried treasure in this town. Yeah, you'd think that, but I've never heard of any in San Francisco, except for Treasure Island out in the bay. But that's named after the book, not some legend. I should get going. Goodbye, Emily. Keep me posted, okay? Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. Hmm, Lewis is up to something. Aha, that's it. Lewis, are you in there? I'll be right there. something in his briefcase. 